these guys been having money. Um, he referenced back to what he previously said that these guys are kingpin. Yes, he stated uh, it had not a lot to do, not stuff was not having to do with the music. And the state played the tape five times and she couldn't really understand. Did he ask you shortly thereafter to stop your recording? Because you mentioned kingpin. She's not getting any information. She doesn't have any specialized knowledge from being there eight years ago. Was it before or after that point that he started talking about the kingpin? Did he make reference to whom he was talking about when he said kingpin? So those are my reasons that all of this is a waste of time. If you're new, make sure y'all hit that notification bell, that like, share, comment, and subscribe. Grab a seat. We finna dig deep. What's up, YouTube family, and welcome to the channel. Man, today we got to break down this young thug YSL Rico trial. Man, the state just came with a whole new terminology that I have not heard since this case has started. And DK, psh, boy, you are, you're through. Now, also Detective Gaither. Man, is there a difference between being certified and actually having the actual credentials to do a job? 40 hours of training? makes you a professional man so much to break down and so much to talk about and that's why we're here in this video y'all make sure y'all jump in the comments at the end of the video hit the like button also especially if you're a young thug fan and definitely don't be afraid to hit that notification bell so you'll get that drop whenever we drop as well without further ado let's dig is when you ask walter murphy how did you all get caught up with that? I remember when Thug was rapping. How did it go from for real music to all of that? Would you explain whether the response that you got is clear on the audio and videotape from 2.52.35 to 2.53.32 as you can listen to it from the recording that you are hearing in the courtroom today? Uh, portions of it is not all the way clear. As you sat there during the interview in person with Walter Murphy, mm -hmm. did you have the same amount of clarity that you get from listening to the tape or could you understand more clearly what was being said? I can understand him clearly uh, sitting in front of him and just talking to him in the, the interview. For the court certification, would you please tell the court what Mr. Murphy's response was to your question, how did it go from real music to all of that? Uh, if you can play back that portion. Um... Man, look at him. He he knew he was telling for he got there. You see a wife beater? Never trust anybody with a saggy wife beater. That's number one. Number two, he's already made it understood that he's not trying to go to jail for X amount of reason. The other thing is you got to pay attention to everything that the detective asked him, whether it was direct or indirectly, as far as street affiliation, gang affiliation, wine sale ties. He just nodding in the green. Man, DK, really? Man, let's dig, man. Yes, he stated uh, it had not a lot to do, not stuff was not having to do with the music. Uh, these guys been in the streets with their criminal histories. He said long record. These guys been having money. Um, he referenced back to what he previously said that these guys are kingpins. Initially, that's, that was his words. These guys are kingpins and they I'm just a pipsqueak within this. So these guys been having money from this portion you just played. 
And later in the interview, did you all talk, um, did he ask you shortly thereafter to stop your recording? Because you mentioned Kingpin just now. Do you remember him asking you to stop recording with the re audio recorder that you had in front of you? Yes, he asked me. I had a little, this little white uh, device on the table. It was a uh, handheld voice recorder. And he asked me to stop that, so I stopped it. Okay. And was it before or after that point that he started talking about the Kingpin? Uh, once he mentioned it, uh, to the best of my recollection, as he began to elaborate more, he, he noticed it and he asked me to stop it. Okay. Now that is crazy. Imagine this. As long as this trial has been going on, no blogs, no newspapers, no sites, no attorneys, nobody anywhere has had to wear a cane pen. Only to find out later in the trial as all this time has went on that the word cane pen was actually dropped from the inside from one of the YSL co-founders, DK. From the interrogation room. Interesting. You dropped the word cane pen there, asked the detective to stop recording. You was already being recorded when you went in the interrogation room. Pfft, common sense, right? But then you asked him to stop the recording. So if this is the information that the state is coming with in this YSL RICO trial compiled, now introducing the word cane pen, and this is on record, I could only speculate or imagine what the state has off record. But is the defense ready for what the state is actually about to bring? Oh, it's finna get deep. Let's dig. Read more. He he noticed it and he asked me to stop it. Okay. Other than saying these guys, did Mr. Murphy ever talk about any one particular person's long record? Uh, just based off of this portion here? Yes. Um, I don't recall at this moment. Or... <clears throat> would hearing it again refresh your memory, or would that do no good? During that portion, uh, Investigator Gaither, did you hear Walter Murphy speak on any one particular person's long record, as he said? Yes. Whose? He said, uh, thug in, in words. Okay. And as he went on to talk about a kingpin, did he make reference to whom he was talking about when he said kingpin? Uh, later on in the interview, he did uh, mention someone named Kente mm -hmm. and also Hot. Um, I believe those were the two names that he used, uh, Kente and um, Hot. Okay, Let, let's be clear. Is there anybody that he didn't tell on? Like, you told on people that weren't even involved in YSL. Now, we did hear in an interview one time, there was an interview Young Thug said he, he knows who's telling because uh, they telling on his ops. But if them same people was going and reporting and telling on your ops, you don't think they was possibly telling on you too? Like, I mean, the rap game, the street game, this is what happens when you... When you put them together, is this is what you get, yeah? Kingpin status allegedly, rapper allegedly, street allegedly, like every title you get going forth, man in a dress, everything that you do can and will be used against you when you're in the entertainment business. But Thug should have knew better, so he should have did better. Let's dig. During the first portion of the interview, he just uh, attempted to separate himself from YSL, basically stating, you know, he, he hadn't been committing any crimes. He hadn't, you know, really been around them. Um, he appeared to be a little uh, evasive when speaking specifically about uh, incidents involving YSL. So that was my line of question of, you know, when you guys first started. A little hesitant and reluctant. Well, when? I, I don't see it. Now, was he trying to create distance from YSL? Possibly. But do you see the look on the prosecutor's face? Oh, the state is in this. She is loving every second of it. Keep saying what I'm saying. Keep 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 going over the lines. Look at it. Pay attention. Let's dig. Like I stated in uh, with Red Cartel and Block 125, at that point, what we knew of, you know, the information they were putting out to the masses was strictly music. Um, and then at this time in 2015, 
we saw it rapidly turning from not just music, but it began to form into what we consider a gang war between these two rap labels. And before you said to him, how did it go from real music to all of that, did you give him any other clarification as to what you meant by all of that? No. And what was it that you meant by all of that? All those retaliatory shootings and crimes against each other. Now, what's interesting about this whole situation, especially with the state and the state's witness, as well as the judge, definitely can't leave him out because he's definitely here or there. But what's interesting about Detective Gaith is that the state brought this ex-detective in, and it's not knocking anything with a past work history or credentials, but 40 hours for a gang expert? You got certified after 40 hours... It's people in the streets that got more experience and expertise at being gang affiliate or gang information than 40 hours. You got 40 hours. And this is what the state has compiled all together over 40 hours with a gang expert. Not to mention even with DK. If the state is working on impeaching him to show that he's not credible with any of his statements, how can they utilize anything that he said in the court? And this is what the defense has actually been filing motions for that the judge has actually been denying over and over. But today, it seemed like the judge actually woke up and the defense might have caught instead of WN. Let's dig. Just like most of this recording about that um, segment. In addition, Birdman, you heard that earlier in the proffer, maybe at the bench. I, I can't remember. It was either at the bench. This is a chart saying it's at the bench. Um, he's not mentioned in here at all. That was inputted by the prosecutor. He's, and that's Brian Williams, if you don't know who that is. It's a record producer, um, works with uh, Rich Gang. You may remember the uh, band or the group. Anyway, he's not mentioned at all except by the prosecutor's mouth. So to me, I am still maintaining my objections. Um, I it may not have been as articulate as I should have been. Move on to me is an objection under waste of time. It's a 403, or excuse me, 24, 4, 403. But I'm the person that decides that. You aren't. You yeah, I, I know, but you aren't. So it's impro it would be an improper objection for you to make. A move on objection. Okay, that's, my, that's, mine, that's mine to make. Your rationale is correct, but saying it is not proper. That's for the, court to, that's for the court's purview, okay? okay? I okay. Don't agree it's not proper, but in this part, I will absolutely not say move on. I will say 403, waste of time. And waste of time, I think, is insulting. But that's what I'm going to say. Anyway, those are my reasons that all of this is a waste of time, 403, and it should have been done with Mr. Murphy. And this entire, I've objected the whole way. I, I'm not going backwards. I understand your ruling. This entire replaying of recordings made out of court is just not the way that this trial should ever go. Those are my positions. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, Steve is actually right. Is this Rico a waste of time? Ask yourself this. As long as we've been sitting up watching this, the information and evidence that the state is actually presenting looks redundant. It's repetitive. It looks like it's the same thing over and over again with a different presenter, a new face on the case here and there. But is this enough to actually sway the jury? And why does the judge keep allowing the state to keep doing the same thing, knowing that it's only creating shock appeal? Is that to try to control the room? And is that judicial? Let's dig. The state said that they need to play this for investigator Gaither because she was there and she has some specialized understanding about what was said. And what did we just watch? Like, let's just be, let's, let's just deal with reality for a second. She, she sat at the witness stand and the state played the tape five times and she couldn't really understand. She's not getting any information. She doesn't have any specialized knowledge from being there eight years ago. What she's doing is she's listening to a tape and she's doing her best to figure out what Mr. Murphy was mumbling about. And the reality, Your Honor, is that's not her job to do that for the jurors. The jurors are, this tape is in evidence. The jurors are gonna have the ability to hear this tape. Uh, they're gonna have the ability to say, when, when they're deliberating, Your Honor, they're gonna write a note, Your Honor, we're having trouble with this tape. Can we replay the tape? And then they can make their own determinations as is in their province, as jurors, of what was said. But having someone else, not because they were there, but having someone else just listen to a tape and determine what they think is said and then tell the, the jurors what they believe was said after listening to the tape themselves is wholly improper. The jurors are supposed to listen to the tape and determine what was said. That's their job. It's not Investigator Gaither's job. Thank you. Okay. And exactly. If I'm in the if I'm the juror, 
why would I want the detective who's already created that narrative with based off of their investigation and their paperwork? Why would I want them to narrate what's going on? <laughs> but the state, the state is trying to pull one. But the judge, not today. Let's dig. Okay, uh, from reading uh, this particular case, Ellis is very um, helpful to the court. Here's the challenge. Most of the case law that talks about narration or a witness's testimony as it relates to the videotape, there's no inconsistency with the, with the tape and what the, what the person coming about the tape is. In this case, there's definitely a, a difference in, we're, we're, we're relying upon this detective's sole understanding as to what he was saying. So whatever the jury's gonna, jury's gonna have to kind of think about it is their, I would agree, Mr. Short, I think it's their purview. I think if I let this, if I let her comment on this, um, bless you. It's it there. There's room for interpretation as to what is being said. So, um, and she's testifying as it relates to what she believes he means. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna disallow it. Yes. Responsive. It's just that for the people outside of the interview room, it's difficult to discern. But the court has ruled, and I will abide by that ruling, that the jury deciphers it for itself. But the court. Oh, I, I mean, in terms of, pl of playing it, there just can't be. But see, the courts. I'm trying to understand why do you want to play it again? <clears throat> Hasn't been played already. Has it been played in front of this jury already? It was played, Your Honor. And when? It was, uh, yesterday. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so why are we playing it again? Because in order for the state to propound the questions that we intend to Such ask, as? Why did she ask him how it went from real music to all of that, what she meant by all of that, and did he seem to have any difficulty understanding her question, and did he give an answer that she considered responsive in that moment, as she recalls it? In I thought that you moment. asked that already. I, I can... I, 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 she asked it outside the front. Yes, and that was here with the court, not with the jury. That's all. Exactly. Repetitive evidence. Like, move the case, man. Like, stop wasting all the taxpayers' money. Stop wasting our time. Move the case. You said it's furtherance in the RICO. Let's get furtherance in the case. Let's dig. So, we raised objections about playing the same video that was already played yesterday, today, under Rule 403, cumulative places undue emphasis on the evidence etc your honor i said i would consider i said i would consider it you said be you need to be judicious that's what you said to the state and now we're just playing the thing okay for a second time for no purpose just just so we can ask the detective the former investigator if she asked the question in that prior interview which is on tape which is going in evidence which the jury is going to have that's not judicious. We're yeah. just, we're, right now, we're just replowing the thing the second time around. It's cumulative. And, you know, our stance is it shouldn't have been played once. But okay. um, at this point, it's a 403 issue, and, it's, and it's, there's no probative value. It's getting cumulative, Ms. Uh, Ms., uh, Ms. Love. Right. I mean, so, so, and, and remember, they haven't put on their case in chief yet. They don't have to. Right. So, so. so, so you making correlations to him is not, not appropriate as of yet. Okay. Understood, Your Honor, but I'm glad that the court pointed out with our burden, we have to take advantage of the opportunity that we have to get as much clarity for the jury as we can. I understand that, but you, you've come to a point where I believe... Of course, attempt to ask Mr. Murphy about this, and he claimed no knowledge, no memory, but we move on, we'll move on, Your Honor. Okay, all right, so you're not playing this again? Not Please this don't portion. play it again? Okay, no. all right. Okay. Now, that was definitely a W for the defense. Salute to YSL Steel and Matt Shaw, but the prosecution of Ms. Love definitely ain't just going out quietly. And it's ironic that every time that the state is actually starting to connect that alleged RICO trial, guess what they do? They drop the ball, and then they turn around and revert back to the witnesses that are facing impeachment. And guess what, DK? Since you're still in court and you told first, as they said, first shall be last and the last shall be first. It's your turn, and you up next. Let's dig. That's just what I go on for, okay? Because I heard who did it and why and why we did it. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's going to kill him. I got to put my gun on him. I got to put my gun in the wall. And I'm trying to Listen, after, from what I know and, and how close you all are with Thug, and just like you said, ain't nobody just going to be up there high by a spot. You and Nard, y'all got to do shit together. The conversation has been said about what happened. It's just hard to believe. It ain't like you one of the younger members, and you know what I'm saying? You just new, new to the crew. I don't know. Yeah. You serious what I said? So it's almost like... From what you told me, you, you, you wasn't down the members. That's what I'm saying. I'm 
I'm from, yeah, yeah, man. It's what you got, bro. Then it was just me, Thuggy, Wendell, and Slow. These four, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping nigga, bitch, homie, corn. I'm tapping nigga, that's lying up. You know what I'm saying? I branched off from the folk. You even said you stopped saying me for a minute, though. I'm telling you, I, I branched off. Now, was there ever a time when Walter Murphy indicated he had seen Donovan Thomas and Thug together, cordial with, with one another? Yes, he stated they were seen in the club together. And was that prior to December of 2014 or after December of 2014? Uh, I'm not certain of the context. Okay. Did Wisdale have a gambling house that you all were aware of within the gang unit at the Atlanta Police Department? Yes. I stand the question. Did APD gang investigators um, identify a location where YSL people like to gather? We did. Where was that location? Uh, it was a few years ago, to the best of my recollection, I believe it was somewhere uh, near Moreland Avenue. Moreland Avenue? Somewhere in that area. All right. My, so let me ask y'all this. Is it safe to say, what was that song Rich Home McQuan came out with? Some type of way, DK feels some type of way. Man, is it safe to say that DK feels some type of way? Yeah, I agree. To be talking this grease in an interrogation room, but be scared to go behind the walls, it's just, just blows my mind. But it gets deeper than this. Let's dig. Rapper, Rich Homie Kwan. And when he spoke about um, the beef between If Gang and Slime, did you have any understanding based on your investigation what Slime was, or the entity Slime, what that was meant to refer to? Yes. Who? Yes. I sustain the objection. Yak and Duke and Roscoe. Mm -hmm. I've been I've been to Roscoe, though. I'm not saying everybody know Roscoe. I was always cool with Roscoe, but other than that, I don't, I don't really, I don't know this shit. What about you and uh, Duke and Yak and, <coughs> excuse no, me, and all those guys? I don't fuck with Duke and Yak. Them niggas just, what? they just weak off because he got the line, bro. Them niggas want Duke the same nigga we got into it in the club. Common door broken shit. You know what I'm saying? That shit. I don't, I don't know how dudes look at it and why he fuck with them niggas like that, but I don't know what it is. I don't get out with them niggas like that. I come around, I get what I need, get from thug. I come around, my sister don't come around. I speak to them niggas, they be it. I be gone, I don't talk to Duke yet. Probably take a picture with them or something like that. I'm putting in the ground. Other than that, I ain't really kicking with them niggas like that. I'm the time I kick with them when we went on tour. That's the only time I kick with them. And when y'all went to compound that night? But you, I don't know if you told you Dennis something that comes out of here. Oh, yeah. You know what you're talking about, Dennis? Yeah. I don't know what you said. I'm talking about that, bro. I mean, boy, yeah. I'm talking about it. I'm talking about it. Let's start from where y'all originated from, where y'all went, how y'all got there. Let's go from that. Let's, let's, let's just get into the compound. Where did y'all go? So as day 66 of the Young Thug YSL Rico trial comes to a close, ask yourself this. What more did you learn today that you didn't learn from yesterday? Now, one thing I can say in my personal opinion that I did actually learn is that the state is actually trying to introduce Young Thug to the jury at the end of their actual presenters as an actual cane pen. And man, the status of a cane pen definitely holds that weight as well as that name. But ask yourself this. Is the jury convinced? Has the state actually presented enough evidence for young thug to actually be found guilty and when young thug actually ever be free again or will the state actually end up in the wind by proving that he is the true ysl kingpin 
man y'all jump in the comments let me know what y'all think has dk been the most impactful witness for the state or did detective gaithers come and take that away it's your boy jay until next time stay safe stay vigilant and remember the life you save might be your own Till next time phew, gone